today we have the privilege to gather as a family of God to listen to the words that come from God that will enable us to be part of these branches that must connect ourselves to the trunk, the vine, the true vine himself, Jesus. The first reading we have we had, we listened to the experience of St. Paul, who was Saul. Anybody who knew of Saul would understand the kind of personality he was. He was radical. He was dedicated, committed to the religion of Judaism. And he, he was ready to do anything to make that faith known. I guess when he was firing or was on fire for God, he must have thought that he was a very wonderful branch connected to God, to Yahweh. But along the way, he would discover that he was indeed disconnected himself. He was there at the very time Stephen was killed, stoned. And the cloth of Stephen was placed right at his feet. I guess he felt victory. But he did not know Little did he know that he has to continue the mission Stephen started. And the end of Stephen will be more or less his end. Because the cloth is always a extension of the person who owns the cloth. However, he started the, the work thinking he was doing the work of God. He was going from house to house, from door to door, arresting people of the way, the followers of Christ. To the point that he went to, the, to take a special permission from, from the high priest to enable him to go and arrest every possible person who professed Jesus Christ. The zeal was so strong. However, the permission was given to him and he left and moved to do the job. On the way, on the way to destroy the people of the way, because Christians were called people of the way before they went to Antioch and then they were called Christians later. But all the while, they were called the people of the way. So top Saul went to capture the people of the way. But on the way, the way stopped him. The way who is Jesus stopped him and showed him the right way. It was at this time he was now connected himself to the right way. But then he has a lot of things to do. When Ananias was told, go and see Saul, he said, no. I know this man. He is a terror, a terror. In fact, I have already heard that he went and took permission to come and destroy us. But the Lord said, no, go. He has taken a new way. But I will give him what he will go through. The moment he has connected to me, the pruning, the moment he, branch, has connected to the vine, the pruning will start. He will suffer a great deal. He will suffer a great deal because of this name, Jesus Christ. Now, 
Saul, Paul. The work of new work has begun. He will now begin to talk about the same thing he was before killing people for. And he found himself a missionary. The first missionary journey, he landed in Antioch and Pisidia, where the Jews, the Christian, the Christian Jews, the Greek-speaking Jews, who call Hellenists, were present. He started giving the reflection. First of all, he will first he will encounter the first disappointment. Because the disciples, the apostles will say, we don't trust this man. We don't believe in this man. Maybe he was pretending. And when we get close to him, he will massacre us. They didn't accept the newness of life in him until Barnabas intervened and said, no, this man has taken a new shape. Something new has happened to him. Before he was disconnected from the vine, never knew that he was disconnected. That's why he was violent, deadly, killing, persecuting. Now he has been connected by Jesus. But he will go through pruning. The first encounter was some, certain, somehow, some kind of rejection. But later on, he was accepted. However, more problem is ahead. The Jewish people like him, but these ones are Hellenists. Hellenists are the Greek-speaking Jews. Jews who were not speaking Hebrew anymore or Aramaic. They were not speaking Greeks because they have mixed up with Greek people. They look at Saul as Paul was, Saul was talking about Jesus Christ. They were wondering, this man, are you not our, you are a heretic, a heretic you are. You used to talk like us. You used to be like us. What has happened to you? They didn't know that they, he has been connected to the vine. The real vine, the good vine. Because Israel in the Old Testament were identified as the, the vine of the Lord. But unfortunately, they didn't produce fruit. They were unfaithful. But this is the real vine, Jesus Christ, is the true one. They prepared to kill Saul. This Hellenist, they planned to kill him the way he killed Stephen. They plan to kill him. But what did Paul do? He ran away. He disappeared. He stopped talking about Jesus. No! He remained adamant. He remained faithful. Talking about Jesus. Because there's no other way but the way. No other way outside the way who is Jesus. If you step out of him, you are no more on the way. Because he's the way. He suffered a lot. At that point, he said, Lord, what is happening? And Jesus says, my grace is enough for you. You know what it means to be connected to the vine. Because if you know what the vine stands for, the cross, the master, the vine, the trunk, to remain connected with the Father, the way, the trunk, Jesus appeased the Father, the way he has shown the Father that he loved the Father so deeply was by dying. The death of Jesus was the climax of saying to his father, I love you. Because the father says, you go and do this. Having responded to his wolf saying, I love you. From my point, our own point of view, is that love? When, you're going to, when you suffer. But that's love. Because something good is ahead. If you 
connect yourself with Jesus, there will be pruning. The pruning will be the difficulties you go through because of your closeness to Jesus. The insult you go through, the humiliation you go through, disappointment you go through, your friends who will leave you, your, your friend, who, those who are, who are so close to you, who will leave you. Even the place you, you are working, the working place, they will try to sabotage you. They will try to make sure that you go down or even eliminate you because you are different. You are no more the same. That's why they look at a Paul and say, Paul, you are no more the same. We kill you. You used to be like us. But now you are different. We kill you. To connect it to the vine is a tough one. But what we must understand is, is this. When we are connected to, with the, to the vine, we are about to bear a lot of fruit. No one can bear any fruit of justice, of love, kindness, generosity, without connecting to the source of these great gifts. Many times we encounter a lot of problems. Many times you belong to a group. Many times in the firm or company where you work, you are giving your time, energy, strength, everything. But at the end, you don't receive appreciation. And you are about to give up. You don't know that you have been pruned. When you are doing the right thing and no one appreciates, appreciates you, you are being pruned for something great. Unfortunately, we give up at the, mo the most important time. We give up. Because once you are experiencing adversity in your life, prosperity is in front of you. Anytime you find yourself facing adversity, humiliation, insults, disappointments, and you are conscious of it because you are connected to the vine, and the vine is producing and bringing Jews to you, the Jews of strength from him that is different from any other. The fruit you are bearing, fruit of kindness, love, and, and generosity. People around you who are not used to that, they will sabotage you. If you are working in a farm and you are doing very good, you're trying to make sure that the farm goes, the, the company goes from strength to strength. There are some of your colleagues whose work is how to take, make, siphon all the funds from it. And if, if the, the company is collapsing, doesn't concern them, they want to get everything from it. But they say, no, it's not right. We're here to make sure this company works. They look at you, you will have to go. Either we eliminate you, we pause you, we do anything to you. In the place where you're in office, government office, tax office, any kind of office you are, and you are meant to give service to the people who come to you. And you are doing your own with good hearts. But your colleagues don't feel comfortable with you because they felt that this opportunity to have their own cake. So a document that's supposed to sign now, they ask you come tomorrow, come next tomorrow. Cannot come the next tomorrow because they want you to give them something. That's why they ask you come tomorrow, come tomorrow, come tomorrow until you will have given them all that is not supposed to be given to them, then they will sign. But after they receive, they receive their salary for the same work they have done. And they say, that's normal. This is how we do it. Because they are disconnected from the trunk. They are dead. They don't produce any fruit of kindness. No one does anything good anymore unless somebody pays it for it. If you are going on the road now and your car, car breaks down, Nobody will push it for you unless you pay them. No one will help you. If you fall into the gutter, nobody will help you on the, unless you pay them for doing that. Because we are disconnected from the vine and therefore we lack fruit. No more kindness. No more loving kindness. No one is generous anymore. Nobody is ready to give because God has given me. So I give you and the more I give you, God gives me because I become instrument of God's love to everyone. 
I become a channel of God's, God, God's goodness. As he gives me, I give others. And that's the secret of wealth. People who are generous, they don't lack. People who are not generous, they will continue to yearn, begging, crying, God, you never gave me enough. Never gave me enough. Never gave me enough. And you will never have it. Because God wants you to be a channel of the wealth. The channel. That when you have, you must release it. Then more will come. You release. Keep giving. Keep giving. As it comes to you, you give out. You will never lack. But those who accumulate, 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 they waste it. They waste it. Instead of somebody to take it, it will be wasted. That's why somebody can buy 10, 10 cars, 20 cars, 50 cars. When you wake up in the morning, you just look at these cars like this. They, as if he's selling all of them. One, two, three, four, Rolls Royce, this and that. He's just looking at them, forgetting that one day, he will not even bury with one, one of them. Oh. Not even one with, who, who will we do with dig a grave now? Huh? Unless you bring Carapella or Buddha's or to create one, one, one compound. We forget. Why? We disconnect ourselves from the trunk. We, we are dead, but we are walking dead. We think we are alive because I, I, can, I, I will begin to be alive when I begin to give life to the people. No one lives unless he is a life giver. No one truly lives unless he or she is a life giver. If you don't give life, you will never live. Because you will be dead, thinking you are alive. Because everyone around you is, die, is dying. And you know what? You are holding their own food, their own gifts. Why? Because disconnect yourself. The Lord is inviting you and I today to do like St. Paul. Notwithstanding the, the problem around him, he didn't deviate to what he was called to do, to make Jesus known. Can you make Jesus known? I say this severally. If you come to Mass or come to prayer, if you are coming because on Sunday, if I don't come, it's sin. It's a sinful thing not to come to Mass. You are, not yet, you are, you are still disconnected. Because the reason why to come to Mass is to encounter Jesus, the person of him. The person of Jesus Christ must be the what have brought you to come. So, the idea of coming, to, coming late shouldn't be there at all. Because the person you want to encounter is everything that you can need in this life. And therefore, your own goal is to encounter him. So I go to Mass on time. I sit down. I relax. I concentrate to everything that goes on. Because every bit of the symbol expressed in the Mass are part and parcel of the experience. Lastly, if you are connected with the Lord, I said this before, Many people do it. You are in a group. And somebody hurts you. Somebody makes you angry. Somebody insults you. After you have put, put in your energy and money, you just felt, I will never get involved again. No. You have been pruned. You have been pruned to become the best. You give up. The mark, one of the qualities of a good leader is, able, is the one who is able to receive the bullets. The bullets will, will prune you. You will have oppositions. Those who will not agree on what you said. But the moment you know you are saying the right thing, which means you are connected to the vine, you remain steadfast. Because before you know, you overcome that and you go higher and higher. That those who will speak against you or those who have spoken against you 
we turn around to praise God because of you. Imagine if you have given up before. Maybe I am president of CWO or CMO or, C or whatever group I, I am, and I, I, I get annoyed, or any group I find myself, and I give up easily. Or I say, I will not go to church. I will not come to church again. I will, why do you do that? You are being pruned, and you are giving up. Every adversity is the pruning process. Don't give up. Remain steadfast because something good is about to happen in your life. You are in a family. Your children are make, messing up. And you're about to ask God, why do you give me this kind of children? Your business is not working very well. God, why me? Somebody you love is very sick. You have prayed. He said, God, why me? You have been pruned. Demonstrate your faith. Show God that, God, I will love you notwithstanding everything. The, the, the best prayer God loves is this. What's called prayer of praise. The prayer of praise is when you are thanking God for being God. Notwithstanding whether he has helped you or didn't help you, whether he give you this or give you that, that's one prayer of thanksgiving. If you give, if you give me 10 naira, I give you 10 naira. If you, give, you help me to, pass, to, 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 win, to get this job, I will give you one cow. As if you are beginning with God. This is not prayer. prayer. The main prayer is a prayer of praise. You praise him for being God because he has been God before you came to be. His being God is not determined by your problem. If he doesn't help you, I will not go to Mass again. I will not pray again. You are still disconnected from the vine. Because God is God without you or me. If you connect with him in prayer, it is for, own, for your own good. If he said, I will not pray again, it's still for your own bad situation. Because God will continue to be God. Whether you praise him or you not praise him. If you dance from here from morning to night, singing, 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 say, oh, God is very happy. He has been happy before you begin to sing. It, sing. If you stop singing, he's still happy. Because our praise and worship does not make anything to him. Rather, it helps you to connect better to him. And I pray that God may help each one of, this, each one of us today to be like St. Paul. Move on. Remain connected to the vine. Remain connected with him. No matter what. Where there is adversity, prosperity is ahead. May the Lord bless us this day through Christ our Lord.